third of three meetings this evening. Uh, at this time, uh, I will convene the City Council meeting. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove. And in lieu of a roll call, I will ask each board member or council member to introduce himself, beginning to my far right. Dave Mobley, City Council at Large. John Jennings, District 4. Dave Harrison, District 5. Dan McMillan, Board of Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Anthony Davidson, District 3. Ed Bell, District 2. Mary Huser Stewart, District 1. Kathy Coates, Council at Large. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, you've uh, been presented the minutes uh, from the August the 6th meeting. And at this time, I'll ask if there's any corrections or if you have any questions concerning the minutes. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, on the public comments, the very first statement is Joel Kastetter requested that the responsible party for making sure an ordinance is enforced be included in the ordinance going forward. I would, uh, if I could spell this out a little bit more. She wanted to make sure that every ordinance, everybody knows who's going to enforce it, how it's going to be enforced, and which party is responsible for enforcing it. Did I say that right? Who's going to enforce it, the penalty for not doing it. She wanted all that to be included in every ordinance from this point on. And I've noticed in a couple of them that are being brought up tonight, and I'm not sure it always specifies exactly who's going to be enforcing the ordinance. So. As long as everybody understands the way it's written, I'm okay with that. But I want to make sure that if there's any confusion at all, I'd like to fix it now. Okay. So that when I refer back to Joel and Castetter, I can say it's it's very very well explained. Does everybody understand the way it is the her intent with that statement? I agree with that one. Okay, should we should we reword it or everybody is okay with it? I think we should reword it to be official since we we're not on video that night. Okay. So uh, if you my question is, how do you want it written? And I'll be happy to do it. Who's going to enforce it? And what else would you like written? Consequences. Yeah. I'll be, before we. Is enforced. The parties, the parties who will be enforcing said ordinance and the penalty for disobeying said ordinance. I think Does that sound good to everybody? Easy enough. Okay. Further uh, comments by council members on the minutes? Yeah. Also on page 8 of the second vote, it says Councilor Bell seconded the motion, which was de de defeated 5 to 2. And when you count them all up, it's 4 to 3. So the last one, at large, Councilman Mobley should be a no. I got Councilor Moe. This one down here. Mm -hmm. All right. It says five to two. Oh, yeah. Further comments, questions? Further corrections? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve as presented. I'll make, make said motion. motion to approve minutes as. Second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign, please. Move on to public comments. No one has signed up to speak this evening. We'll move on to uh, old business. 
Mayor? Yes. Someone's trying to get attention. Somebody tried to sign up, but the sheet was already taken away before you could do it. I wait till three till. Who who wants to sign up? The... Come on up. Mike Jarvis, 73 South 2nd Avenue. Just wanted to find out the status with the RDC when the alleys will be done per the town or the engineer meeting we had on the 15th. I thought they said on there we have to have that done. Was, was it before they start or at least while they're, we're ahead of them as they're going down? The engineering's done. The contract was approved. And now United Consulting is sent it to the newspaper for publication and then once that's done they'll be able to come in and get packets for the bid and I'm going to guess the bid's going to be sometime in September so I'm going to say the first week of October but that could be wrong. This will be well after the fall festival. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Mike. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to speak who didn't sign up? Move on to old business, general orders number 22, portable basketball goals, third reading. General orders number 22, 2012, is an ordinance that amends chapter 73 of the City of Beach Grove Code of Ordinances by adding section 73.13. Section 73.13 addresses portable basketball goals left on local streets. Whereas pickup basketball games are widespread throughout our city and could possibly pose a risk to all involved when the games are played on local streets and whereas portable basketball goals are placed on local streets under the jurisdiction of the city of Beach Grove by people desiring to play basketball and whereas at times portable basketball goals are not removed from local streets when people quit playing basketball and whereas ordinances have already been established that prohibits children from playing in the streets under the jurisdiction of the city of Beach Grove. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, that amends Chapter 73 and adds Section 73.13 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, to read as follows. Section 73.13, Portable Basketball Goals. One, portable basketball goal shall not be left on sidewalks and streets unattended when finishing playing and shall not be placed in front of a fire hydrant. Was that right, Anthony? Be it further ordained that the Common Council finds it just to amend Chapter 73 and add Section 73.13 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. Be it further ordained that all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. Be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect 60 days after the passage by the Council, tested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. The floor is open for comments by Council members. I didn't hear the, the line about where it applies um, in the beginning of the playing in the streets, and it said streets, uh, alleys, called us that. That was, uh, was there that was an amendment to delete that. Yeah. All of that. Right. So then the street is defined as all of those? Or? No, just a street. Just a street. Right. So an alley or cul-de-sac this would not apply? To would not apply. Okay. That's, that's why I wanted to hear the whole thing to make sure I had it. Yes. As I referred to with Joel and Cass debtors, we have we have no who's going to who's going to enforce this? Is this going to be enforced by the police department? Does that need to be written in that this will be enforced by the police department? Will there be a fine attached to it? Are they going to get out of their car and move it every time? After the tenth time, are they going to find somebody? Or are they just going to be an angry police officer? Is, should, should we add language to who's going to enforce it, what's the penalty for not doing it, should this be city attorney? Yeah, I mean, here, any ordinance, I think it's implied that our, our police department is going to enforce those ordinances. I'm not sure we have to write those in, in the ordinance, unless there's something to the contrary. Okay. Like if we have an animal control officer or something like that. Um, as far as if there's a fine or consequence, that's a, that's a point well taken. 
And if, is the is the mailman is the is the postman going to call the police department? Is he going to call <clears throat> when, when he has to go around a basketball goal to get around to his mailbox, or is he just not going to deliver mail that day? I and don't know if they'll deliver or not. And then it becomes an issue if it's not the owner of the basketball <clears throat> goal is the same owner as the mailbox. That's when you get people honked off at the neighborhood kids. I would guess that the post office is going to approach the city hall. Okay. And ask for help. Mayor? Yes. Um, you've got a good point, and it just reminded me that uh, uh, I had some branches on a tree that they would take a shortcut to my property, and they got over time <clears throat> and so forth. Uh, I did <laughs> notice that. You know, they may not drop, you know, off mail unless I take care of the clear the path. So the post office can not deliver if there's something going on, but they're wanting to go around and do it with the city ordinance. So you know, it's it, you, a point. Well, thank you. I just want to make sure this is written, written well enough that we're not going to adjust this in a couple of years because we didn't put any teeth behind it. We didn't say who is enforcing it. We didn't. And if there's a fine, because there is no fine, you would people just ignore it. I'm just going to bring this up over and over again until we have something in our ordinances that states. The only, the only department that would enforce this would be law enforcement. Right. That's the only department that can enforce it. Yeah. But what would they do? They yeah, that's not what they, they tell them to move it. They move it, and <laughs> next day... I don't know if there was ever, was ever an interest in finding people. Okay. Okay. If I may, too, sure. um, at the end of the... Uh, from uh, most chapters, at the end of their... Uh, at the very end of the chapter, it will have a penalty, and it will say any provisions of this you know, um, any violations within this chapter, and it'll give their um, the ruling, I guess. Okay. Any further comments by council members? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve um, general orders number 22, 2012, on third and final reading. I'll make said motion. I'll second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Do you oppose? Do you oppose? Did. Okay, six one. So. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> To general orders number 25, 2012, except for second reading. And I'll ask for a motion to waive the rules to read uh, general orders number 25 by title only. Need a recommendation? Second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Councilor Davidson, you want to do that by title only? Yeah. Uh, General Ordinance Number 25, 2012 is an ordinance that amends Chapter 50, Sections 50.071 and 50.083 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, concerning the installation of lateral sewer lines, cleanouts, repairs, or replacement of such lines and inspections conducted by the City of Beach Grove and its authorized agent. Floor is open for comment. And, uh, if I may, if you have any comments, I notice our uh, one of the members that helped me out on this uh, is here, uh, our building commissioner. Do you have any questions for him? Would you mind giving a brief overview of what we're signing into? Please. 
<clears throat> if that be okay. Which one is it, Anthony? Uh, just the sewer one. Just the sewer one? Tap fees. Oh, the, oh, the tap fees? Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, it's, it's kind of uh, obvious. It's, it's obvious for us to have this paperwork. It's for all those people that are watching at home on television. Well, yeah, fine, fine. Uh, we, we were, were prepped in the past, we were at $35 for a tap fee, which was way, way inconsistent with what it cost us to monitor those, uh, all those fees. I think we raised it from 35 to 300 on the residential side and to $500 on the, uh, on the commercial side. Uh, it, the, the, whole, the whole situation is tied into the, the many, many problems that we continually have down here. Uh, we're just trying to help offset some of our expense that we, we run into. Uh, our own main lines, and it's, I, I told the mayor uh, back in February, I think we had five or six different instances that actually belonged to the city that, that we had to go and repair. And uh, there, there's no fee, there's been no money to, to take care of that in the past. And that, that was basically our reasoning to uh, the, yeah, increase both at the residential and the commercial sides. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions or comments? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve General Ordinance Number 25, 2012, on second reading only, please. Amen. Said motion. Aye. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. It will be up for third reading at the September the fourth meeting. Next up is General Orders Number 26, 2012, um, a change of ambulance uh, rates for responses outside of the city limits. <coughs> I'll ask for a motion to uh, waive the rules to read by title only, please. Amen. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. <coughs> General Orders Number 26, 2012 is an ordinance that amends Chapter 34, Section 34.15B of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, pursuant to ambulance responses outside the corporate city limits of the City of Beach Grove. Floor is open for comments. If there's no comments, I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, General Orders Number 26, 2012, on second reading only. I'll make said motion. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will hear this on third reading at the next meeting, September the 4th. <clears throat> Not on your agenda, Council, is a uh, RDC update for uh, an appointment. I'll defer to the Council President, Ed Bell, at this time. Ed? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we had a meeting, you know, the previous meeting, we had a uh, uh, John Morgan uh, resign from the RDC. Uh, it was unfortunate, but uh, that does leave an opening uh, for the RDC. Um, it is a council pick, and at this time I'll open the floor up for nominations, uh, and in which once we uh, finalize, we'll take the final vote on September the 4th. I would like to nominate Scott Seach. Could you spell that, please? Yeah. Um, well, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, and Seach is S-C, or S-E-A-C-H. Okay. At this time, I, I also have a name. Okay, go ahead. Uh, for my district, um, his name is Ben Herman. He lives at uh, 10 Andrea Court. What was the last name? Herman, H-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. I got his number here, too. Uh, I have one. Uh, uh, her name is right now. Just one. Spot. Liz Lampley. I said it. Who was it? Liz Lampley. Okay, yeah. I'd like to nominate Joe Griffin. Is there any more? If not, we'll close the nomination. 
nominations and uh, we'll leave it up to the council members to interview each one that they wish and September 4th we'll bring it up for a vote. Will there be phone numbers passed out after this meeting? Yes, we will. Instead of doing it on air. <coughs> right. And I, I do, did want to confirm, so all four of these people do want this position. It's something they've all been consulted about. Correct. Does that conclude it, Ann? That concludes it. All right, thank you very much. We'll move on to new business, a transfer of funds. Clerk Treasurer, defer to Dan at this time. Dear counselors, thank you for considering my request as we move through the last half of this year. The money appropriated in certain departments is beginning to run short. <coughs> I will continue to bring before you for council approval request for transfers of appropriations of funds. These transfers do not increase the budget, but instead are corrections to the budget. <coughs> Number one, police department. Transfer $200 from janitorial appropriation number to canine appropriation number, and there was not enough money budgeted for this. We've actually got two canines now where there was only one, so that's the reason for that. Okay. We'll do these separately. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. 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 All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign, please. Okay, number two, Board of Works transfer $2,660 from Board of Works Engineering to Board of Works regular salaries. And there was not enough budget for even one board member. Board members are paid according to salary <coughs> ordinance number seven, established in 2011. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Move on to number three, please. Number three, Board of Works <coughs> transfer of $125 from Board of Works Engineering to Social Security FICA appropriation. Not enough budgeted. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. I'll second from there. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, the same sign. Move to number four, please. Uh, number four, Board of Works. Transfer $40 from Board of Works Engineering to Board of Works Medicare. Again, not enough budgeting. I'll make said motion. Second. second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign, please. Number five, fire department. Transfer $48,112 from Mills appropriation to overtime appropriation. Not enough budgeted. Motion to approve. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, $48,112 for Mills. That's a lot of money mm -hmm. that we're budgeting for Mills. Oh, I, I don't think so. Is it? No. Okay. So, well, uh, then this taking wipes, that out, will they have enough to then hear that? This actually takes all the money out of that appropriation number. They're actually pulling money out of uh, another category right at the moment for that. And uh, Rob's here. If you've got any questions for him, maybe he can answer Chief, that a little better. Please. Because that's a sizable amount taken out of one budget amount. Mayor, Council, thank you for having me up this evening. Um, to explain a little bit about our salaries, um, it is broken down into separate areas. We have our regular salary. As you see on your spreadsheet, we have an overtime category. We have a category for uh, meals also, um, which technically should be lumped into our regular salary. Um, on our appropriation, we also have a sick day buyback. Um, our regular salaries this year we had uh, money appropriated for three EMT positions. Those positions were not filled. So during the course of the year, um, money for other items such as um, the meals and some sick day buyback was taken out of our regular salary. So right now our regular salary is still, our percentage is still above where it needs to be, but our overtime budget, because we're short these three positions, 
um, we became short throughout the year um, with illness, um, injuries, um, we had a backfill, um, plus just regular vacation. Um, several, several times throughout the year we just became short. Um, our overtime budget was $56,000 this year and we depleted that. Um, our overtime money that we're short came out of our regular salaries. So what we're doing is just supplementing uh, money that's already in the budget and we're transferring into our overtime budget. Any questions? Thanks. So there's actually money left. Yes. Yes, there's a... Uh, that's all I was wanting to find out. Absolutely. There's money okay. left. So. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion here. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Number six, city court. Transfer $2,500 from city attorney appropriation <coughs> To longevity education incentive and what this actually is the judge is entitled to $2,500 education pay in accordance with salary ordinance number seven established in 2011 and nothing was budgeted so we were taking the money out of uh, actually law which is basically our city attorney now I have a question on that. Uh, didn't he, did he go to, you know, after he was elected, did he go to get a degree or? No, this is something that, uh, the way our actual uh, education incentive pay is right now, uh, you could have went to, co uh, to school 20 years ago and never returned and you would have still gotten education pay. And that is, and you council members are not, uh, by being elected officials, you're not eligible for that. But like Dennis, myself, we actually are the judge eligible. And so, oh, so you there's to the punch. I was going to ask him. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when you look at the, uh, you know, the ordinance itself, it, it needs cleaned up. So it looks like it. But anyway, that. There was no money in education uh, for him, and so all I'm trying to do is follow the ordinance, and we have caught him up to date. He didn't even know he was eligible, and the last pay period, we paid him up through that pay period. <laughs> motion, uh, motion to approve. I'll make said motion. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. If you noticed on all six of these uh, requests from the, the uh, clerk treasurer, it says not enough budgeted, not enough budgeted. That's not the only thing that was not budgeted in this year's budget. Crossing guards that are used daily at the expense of about 40000 were not put in this budget that we're working right now. The mayor and the clerks Part of the mayor and part of the clerk's salary is paid from sewage works. That was taken out of this year's budget, was not in there. The HSA contribution that the city pays the city uh, employees in the amount of uh, approximately $140,000 was not in this budget. I don't know how that could be missed. Dental premiums paid to Guardian Part, part of those uh, premiums were not put in the 2012 budget. Stormwater repairs in the amount of $300,000 was put in the budget but not budgeted in this year's budget. So <clears throat> this budget is at least $250,000 short of what it was supposed to be. And I think that is terrible. Explain that $300,000 put in the budget but not budgeted. They put $300,000 into the stormwater uh, utility and it doesn't exist. The, the, the money is not the money. there? Mm -hmm. But in the budget it, it was listed as an item. It was listed as an item. Revenue, Kathy. It was listed as 300000 revenue and then it was budgeted as an expense. So if we were 300000 short right there. 
And some of these uh, we're still continuing to find out as we proceed through the year. So this year has been extremely difficult, and I applaud uh, the department heads and all involved to try to straighten it. So we'll move on to conflict of interest statement. I'll defer to the clerk treasurer. Um, this is, again, going back to why I'm transferring money around. The state auditor, which is still here, uh, she told me that this needs to be done and I need council approval for anything I transfer. So you guys are ultimately the decision maker. At the same time, she discovered that uh, Mike Fitzgerald, being a subcontractor as the building commissioner, also needed a conflict of interest statement. And that's actually what this is. Um, and part of that, Mike might be able to explain a little better because she went over it with him. But actually, the conflict of interest, if I'm understanding this correctly, is Mike is the building commissioner, and he actually oversees his own work. Is, is that correct, Mike? And so uh, that's the reason for the conflict of interest statement. There was already one conflict of interest statement that was presented by his wife because she works in the clerk's office, just so we knew that relationship was there. But with the uh, new law that came into effect July the 1st, they're really cracking down to make sure that anything is the bulge, whether it's from a supplier or whoever. And so that's the purpose of this. It was at the advice of the uh, State Auditor. Okay. Motion to approve the. Uh, oh. Is he step up and explain how, how much how much work do you do in the city of Beach Grove? I understand that you are the very 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 little. But what, you know what happens? These guys have to call me on most of it's emergency situation stuff, John. That's what it is. When we got struck by lightning on Saturday evening, they called. Me. I had to come over and do a few things, straightened out. We had, uh, and normally that's all I ever do. I'm not, we're not bitter on city work or anything like that. It, it's just, just say, say that again. We're not, we're, we're not bitter on city. We're work. not bidding on city work. No, so no, this you're is not. this is incidental type of situations that come up. Okay. I, I have a question. Um, you know, they, they list the your name, but you're a company, right? That you're, you're, with this cover this so if any business of yours is part of you know conflict with you know the city like repairs done my company builds the city i'm not person i'm not personal i don't personally build the city for my services as an inspector all right because i'm paid per inspection right all right i build i build in my company name okay. when i do work on the emergency basis that I just told uh, John about, it's in the company name. Okay. So there's, there's no, uh, there's, I, I build nothing personally. Okay. okay. Mark, I have a question for you. Sure. Do you, uh, now you say you do emergency work, on the emergency work, do you, do you inspect yourself on that? Well, there's not, I mean, this is not inspectable stuff, uh, but, and, and Anthony, I mean, yeah. we got to come down when, the, when we have lightning strike, this is not a permittable or uh, type of incident where anybody has to go back to inspect. But as a building commissioner, you're able to decide what's permittable and what's not, correct? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to add one more thing. This lightning strike that he's speaking of, it was Saturday night, what, 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock. Uh, I'll tell you what, I couldn't have got anybody out here. I don't care who it was. And he stayed for several hours. Uh, got things going, we traced it down. So, I mean, uh, he was the first one we called. I mean, we knew he would help us out, and that's how I felt he was helping the city out. It wasn't, you know, I'm trying to throw any business his way or anything else, that's not the point. I think it was the fact that if you need something, Mike's there to help you out. I appreciate that. Any other questions or comments by council members? No, thank you. Thanks, Mike. If not, ask for a motion to approve uniform conflict of interest. Uh, 
makes that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed sign the same sign. Yeah. One name. Okay. I'll have to have some a couple council people sign that. Okay. All right. John, did you want to do 27? I can do 27. General Orders number 27, 2012 is up for first reading. I'll defer to Councillor Jennings. <coughs> uh, General Ordinance number 27, 2012 is an ordinance that amends Chapter 78, Schedule 1 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, pursuant to restricting parking on the north side of Elm Street from Memorial to Killian. Are we going to read this? Uh, yes. Whereas Elm Street is in the area, Elm Street in this area is on a hill with a steep incline with restricted visibility and whereas backing out of the driveways may be hazardous to driver, drivers because they may not see oncoming traffic and people parking cars on the north side of Elm Street cause an added risk and further restrict the view of persons attempting to back out of their driveways and it is recommended by the police chief to restrict parking in the prescribed area listed above. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana that Chapter 78, Schedule 1 of the Code of Ordinance of the City of Beach Grove be amended. Be it further ordained that the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana finds cause to amend Chapter 78, Schedule 1 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove to read as follows. Elm Street, north side from Memorial Drive to, Kik to Killian Drive. Be it further ordained that the Common Council instructs the Board of Public Works and Safety to install no parking signs on the north side of Elm Street from Memorial to Killian. Be it further ordained that all ordinances or parts of the ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. Be it further ordained that this ordinance shall become effective 60 days after passage by the council, attested by the clerk treasurer, and signed by the mayor. Floor is open for comment. If there's no comment, I'll ask for a motion to approve General Order Number 27, 2012. On. Okay. Did you have something? No. Okay. No. I'll ask for a motion to approve General Order Number 27, 2012. On first reading only. I'll make a motion there. Second. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will hear this on second and third reading at the September 4th meeting. General Ordinance number 28, 2012, is an ordinance that, uh, pursuant to street names and road identification. Dan, you want to do this one? Sure. General Ordinance number 28, 2012, is an ordinance that amends Chapter 78, Schedule 1, C of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, pursuant to street names and road identifications. Whereas current road identifications are incorrect and may cause confusion in educating local traffic infractions, and whereas a local street has been renamed without proper changes in the Code of Ordinances, and whereas a street or avenue no longer exists as a result of reconstruction and therefore should be deleted from the schedule of street or avenue parking. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana that amends Chapter 78, Schedule 1, C, of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana. Be it further ordained that the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana finds cause to amend Chapter 78, Schedule 1C of the Code of Ordinances to read as follows. Delete. First Avenue, 140 feet north from Main Street, the west side. Change street name from Pacific to Hornet, Pacific Avenue, Emerson Avenue and the high school, both. Change Avenue to Drive on Grovewood Avenue, Emerson Avenue and South 9th Avenue, north. 
Grovewood Avenue, Emerson Avenue, and Edwards Avenue South. Grovewood Avenue, the east property line of the premises at 321 Grovewood Avenue, and the west property line, property line of the premises at 417 Grovewood Avenue. Be it further ordained that the Common Council finds it just to amend Chapter 78, Schedule 1, C of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove, Indiana. Be it further ordained that all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict are hereby repealed. Be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect 30 days after passage by the Common Council, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I'll ask the Chief to comment. The Police Department approached me about doing this, and uh, the uh, reason for the changes, Chief. If the uh, streets are not named properly as far as drive streets, places, the uh, judge actually could dismiss them unless it's taken care of in court and it's in the proper main street. And if we try to enforce an ordinance or a law that's correctly named. And these streets are currently misnamed? Yes. Pacific is Cornet. Uh, Grovewood Avenue is actually driver place. Uh, there is no first anymore it's Emerson. And the street addresses are Emerson Avenue, where it used to be first. Chief, do you know if has this issue came up in the court before? I don't know about it in the court, but recently we've had some issues about writing tickets on uh, certain streets, and we know that. It's wrong, so we're not going to enforce something that is wrong. Well, Chief, it seems like this probably should be changed because if dispatch now is in Indianapolis, they have no clue, right? That's true. If it's because typed our own dispatcher is new. But. Yeah, it's typed up in their computer that way they're bad and okay. it doesn't show up. All right. And I really thought that was the number one reason why all this was the dangers in it. Yeah. All right. Comments by council members, please. If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve general orders number 28, 2012, on first reading. I'll make that motion there. I second that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. This will be heard on second and third reading at the September 4th meeting. And chief. Um, are, is the police department ready to present more ordinances pursuant to the court? They, uh, I think we're going to bring them to you tomorrow. Okay, I'll ask for someone from the council to sponsor these ordinances on the police department's behalf. Just bring them to me. Okay. All right, thank you. General Orders number 29-2012 is a uh, ordinance that amends Chapter 35 pursuant to the purchasing agency purchasing supplies. Councilor Davidson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, General Order number 29, 2012 is an ordinance amending Chapter 35, Section 35.181 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, pursuant to the Purchasing Agency Purchasing Supplies, whereas the Board of Works and Safety is designated as the Purchasing Agency for the City of Beach Grove under Indiana Code 5-22, and whereas Indiana Code 5-22-6-2 allows the governing body to adopt rules for the purchase of services of, of services governmental body and whereas restrictions must be set in place to ensure proper spending and whereas the common council has determined that purchasing of supplies and services should have tighter restrictions to ensure our city receives the best price possible and now therefore be it ordained by the common council of the city of Beach Grove, Indiana that section 35 dash 181 of the Code of Ordinances be amended and changed with the following. Section 35.181, Powers and Duties, change 25,000 to 10,000. A, the purchasing agency may purchase supplies or services with an estimated cost of less than 10,000 on an open market without inviting or receiving quotes or bids. Be it further ordained that the Common Council finds it just to amend Chapter 35, Section 35, Chapter 35, Section 35.181 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana. Be it further ordained that all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith and hereby repealed. 
be it further ordained that the, this ordinance shall take effect 50 days after passage of the common council attested by the clerk treasurer and signed by the mayor. Floor is open for comment. If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, general orders number 29, 2012, on first reading only. I'll make said motion, Mayor. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. The second and third reading will be at the next, uh, the first meeting of September, September the 4th. Move on to general orders number 30, 2012. General, uh, general orders 30, 2012 is an order uh, pursuant to the establishment of a youth advisory board. I'll defer to Councilor Davidson. Thank you, Mayor. General orders number 30, 2012. Whereas the Common Council desires to involve young people within the city of Beach Grove and to serve as an advisory capacity to the Common Council. And whereas the Common Council desires to create a youth advisory board to facilitate the involvement of young citizens within our city and the government government process, and so to receive a youth perspective on issues which affect the city of Beach Grove, and whereas the Common Council desires to create a youth advisory board and set forth the terms and conditions applicable to appointment the board and well as duties of the board, and whereas 30, chapter 35 of the Code of Ordinances of the city of Beach Grove, Indiana, must be amended by the addition thereto of a new section 35.21, <coughs> excuse me, now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, that Chapter 35 be amended by adding a new Section 35.21 to read as follows. Section 35.21, Youth Advisory Board. <coughs> there is hereby created a there is hereby created a, it, an, youth, an advisory board to be known as Youth Advisory Board. There went after board. The purpose of the board is to provide for the Common Council a youth perspective on issues that affect the city of Beach Grove and to educate the youth of our city about local government. <coughs> B. The board shall consist of 11 members. Each member must be either must either attend high school within the city to include Beach Grove High School, be a resident be a city resident attending a, a private high school or high school students home school within the city of Beach Grove city limits. Each member of the board must be in grades 9, 10, 11 or 12. Each board member shall be appointed to, appointed to a term of one year. Each member must submit a letter of recommendation from the student's principal or homeschool facilitator. No member shall serve on the board beyond that member's graduation date. During the first meeting of the school year, the board shall select a chairperson, a vice chairperson, and a secretary. C. The board shall meet once a month during the school year. Meetings shall be held at Hornet Park Community Center. Meetings shall not be held during school hours. Clerk Treasurer shall provide the board members assistance with regard to compliance with public meetings and public records law, as well as parliamentary procedures that is relevant to the proceedings of the board. The board shall report to the Common Council monthly to notify <coughs> the Com Common Council of issues discussed and actions taken at the monthly board meetings. The board shall consider and discuss any issue of relevance to the Common Council. The board shall report to the Common Council the youth perspective on issues that affect our city. D, the, the Youth Advisory Board shall have one member of the Common Council who shall act as a liaison. The Council liaison shall be a non-voting member of the Youth Advisory Board. E, at the first meeting of the school year, the Board shall select among its members one member to serve as the ex officio non-voting member of the following Board, Board of Parks and, Rec board of Parks and Recreation. Be it further ordained that the Common Council finds it just to amend Chapter 35 of the Code of Ordinances to add Section 35.21, be it further ordained that all ordinances or part of ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. Be it further ordained that, that this ordinance shall come into effect 60 days after passage by the Common Council attested by the Clerk Treasurer and signed by the Mayor. And before, before I get too far, I would like, I already like to amend this. I need to delete um, Section E out of it after new information today. All right. And I, I'm sorry, I, I would also like to add one more thing. Uh, when I did read that one member of the Common Council shall act as a liaison, um, I think it's only fair if I create this ordinance, I should be the, the one to volunteer my time unless you guys are, are, you know, are willing to or, or want to. Well, that was one question I was going to ask. Um, second, um, I've got a question on the Common Council. Um, with the youth advisory 
Now, when they send the, uh, the information, or they send it to the council and then we vote on who is going to be the 11 people, one, because it looks like that's what it's coming to. That's basically <coughs> Okay. Each member will submit. Each, one, each member will submit a, the letter of recommendation. Okay. And we, we'll get that. To All right. And there, I, I do have a um, application and all that too. But obviously, it's not. Okay. Well, not really. Yeah, I understand that. that. I want that clarified. The other <coughs> is um, the Beach Grove School is great, but how about the ones that go, you know, the Catholic private schools that live in Beach Grove? Absolutely. And I think you, that should be right. And to look at Section B there. It, it was, with, yeah, where it says within the uh, att attend Beach Grove High School, be a city resident attending a private high school okay. or oh, high school students home school. Okay. I missed it. And I did wonder, Anthony, um, what happens when the school district doesn't want to have you in it? Of uh, right now, um, I had, I approached uh, Dr. Paul Kaiser, the superintendent of Beach Grove Schools, and both um, Steve Cox, the principal of Beach Grove High School, and they are both um, uh, ready to go on this. And uh, as soon as I get an okay, then we'll start spreading the word. But we kind of hope to have this. We, we hope to have this passed back in uh, back in May, so that they could start you know with the new year. But um, you know, fortunately, we didn't get to that. So, um, we're we're going to go with what we got. Any other questions or comments by board members or council members? How is this different than the last one? <clears throat> the last one that you presented. What are the major? Is there anything major here different? There's not too much major. Um, it, it it does go into a little bit more about um, the you know the letter of recommendation. Um, but other than that, uh, there's a, a couple of uh, grammar issues. That I corrected from last time, and obviously we're deleting section E of that. But now, if I remember right, and I tried to find my other copy from that, so it's been I a while. Apologize, because um, I tried to keep everything. Uh, I think it was the last time, and I think it was brought up that you left it up to the principal to make a decision on who they recommended for the board. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And you've taken that out and left it now to the council. Yes. Okay. Because I thought Basically. that was, we asked for an amendment on that. Yeah, well, we, we just closed well, it. We, right. we closed it, but we advised the yeah. amendment. But all it asked from the student's principal is a letter of recommendation. Okay. And I have seen some um, that call for uh, the student principal or um, teacher, but, you know. Okay. That's good. Thing. All right, uh, before we start, we'll ask for a motion to amend. General Ordinance number 30, 2012, page 2, subsection E, from uh, the ordinance. Ask for a motion. I'll make such motion. Second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Move to uh, General Ordinance number 30, 2012, on first reading. The motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve General Ordinance Number 30, 2012, on first reading. Second, please. I will second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will move to second and third reading on September the 4th. General Ordinance Number 31, 2012, is an ordinance that amends, ordinance that amends Chapter 77. Traffic schedules, I'll defer to Councilor Davidson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, General Ordinance Number 31, 2012. An ordinance that, uh, an ordinance amending Chapter 77 traffic schedules, uh, Schedule 4 speed limits, 6 and 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, whereas speed limit signs currently read 40 miles per hour on Emerson Avenue, and whereas speed limit changes were posted without changing the Code of Ordinances, and whereas the Common Council has determined that changing the code of ordinances to reflect the speed limit in which signs currently read must be done. <coughs> and, excuse me, whereas Chapter 77, Schedule 4, 6, and 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, the Code of Ordinances, must be amended to provide forth, to, 
to provide for the matters set forth herein. <coughs> now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, that the following section of Chapter 77, Schedule 4, 6, and 7 of the Code of Ordinances must be amended and hereafter read as follows. 6. Motor vehicles shall not be operated on the following streets in excess of 40 miles per hour. Emerson Avenue. 7. Motor vehicles shall not be operated on the following streets in excess of 45 miles per hour. Delete Emerson Avenue, I-465 to Thompson Road. Be it further ordained that the Common Council finds it just to amend Chapter 77, Schedule, Schedule 4 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, be it further ordained that all ordinances or part of ordinances in conflict with thereby be repealed. Be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect 60 days after passage by the Common Council, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. And if I could add to this too, this was a change that I noticed back when we did um, the uh, uh, other speed limits. Um, currently reads, uh, as I said, you know, 45 miles an hour on Emerson Avenue, I-465 to Thompson Road. So we're just fixing that. Comments by council members? If not, ask for a motion to approve on first reading. I'll raise that motion. Second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. This will be heard on second and third reading at the September the 4th meeting. That concludes new business this evening. Comments from council members to my far right, Councilor Mobley. Councilor Jennings. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that the fireworks are this weekend. Uh, hope it goes off without a hitch. I hope everybody shows up, brings a lot of people with them. Uh, the vendors were nice enough to postpone their uh, event. The, the fireworks were... Uh, the people that do the fireworks were kind enough to, uh, so let's support them. Let's show up in mass number, uh, support them, and of course donate your money to the promoters club so we can do it again next year. But uh, let's, let's let's do our best to be hospitable and show up and put on a good show for them, as I'm sure they'll put on a good show for us. Um, do you want to plug the last Friday's game? Oh, congratulations to the boys var boys varsity football team. Uh, they won the football game first time in the last 19 games. They put on a spectacular show. For those of you that don't, uh, that don't get out to see the football games, uh, they are a, a very well-prepared group of young men. Uh, the, the weight trainer has been working uh, diligently. The, uh, the new coach finally has them for over a year. Uh, they put a pretty good team together and beat a uh, beat a pretty good team of uh, of Lutheran Academy. Uh, it's a fantastic game. I think fun was had by all, except of course the opposing team. Uh, it was a great crowd. The uh, I've never seen so many students there. It's been a long time since I've since since my wife could remember that many students there. They had a blackout, so everybody got to paint themselves. They had a great time. Uh, very well attended, uh, and I hope the season progresses with more of us as adults showing up with our children and not just dropping them off at the door. Uh, it's a good time had by all. Thank you for the reminder. Okay. Dave, comments? Um, other than the fact that <clears throat> this is about the first meeting that I think I've been to that on however many ordinances we passed, it's the first time I think most of us voted the same way. <laughs> and I thought it was not bad. <laughs> Anthony, um, I'd just like to thank uh, all, you know, all the council members for their support. I know I threw a lot of ordinances out tonight, and uh, one of them was the same one I did previously, but I'm very ecstatic that it passed, and um, uh, hopefully it'll uh, do the same on second and third reading. I also have a concern from a citizen that was brought forward that she couldn't find any uh, Board of Works meetings uh, videos on the website, so I didn't know if that was something that we could get on there. Or... From how long? Uh, there's none. From what? Board, Board of Works meetings? Oh, no. I, I can put them up there, but uh, I haven't been putting them on. I just put them on the cable channel. Okay. So, yeah. How about the Board of Sanitation also? I'll do both. 
that was it. Thanks, Ed. Ed? Well, first of all, I want to thank Councilman Davidson for bringing that to you, Council back, and cleaning up the wording. Um, it's a, a need, and I think we talked about it, you know, previous, whenever it was, you were saying May, a long time ago, but thank you for bringing it back, and I believe it will pass this time. Um, the, the youth do need to know about how government works firsthand, so thank you. Mary? That's it? Yep. Uh, again, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Glad everything did pass uh, pretty much unanimously. And I did want to thank publicly the Board of Works for installing the no parking signs along Detroit Avenue. I have had more people stop by my house, come in at the grocery store, wherever, that that has been something that's been much needed from, from Beachwood up to 13th Street. More people have mentioned to me that that's such a was such a hazard for the kids. So thank you to the board groups for that, and to the police for patrolling it so well. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before we uh, adjourn, I want to remind the council uh, we have a regularly scheduled meeting on Tuesday, September the fourth. Uh, we will have a special council meeting on September the 9th, or excuse me, September the tenth, and the only order of business will be the first reading on the two thousand thirteen budget. And then the second and third reading on the 2013 budget will be October the 15th. Could you repeat that again, Mayor? I'm sorry. September the 10th will be a special meeting of the City Council. Okay. And okay. the only order of business will be the 2013 budget. Okay. And then uh, the second and third reading of the budget will be October the 15th. Uh, our intent is to have the budget draft form to you within the next week so that you can begin to review it. And then uh, also I want to uh, give you the names of the people that were recommended for the RDC appointment from the council. Scott Siege, Ben Herman, Liz Lamping, and Joe Griffin. Those four individuals. And September the 9th is the fundraiser for the police department's canine at O'Gara's, so we don't want to forget about that. With that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Excuse me. Oh. Can I ask a question? I'm confused about something. Ed, when you said um, that John Morgan had stepped down from the RDC uh, two weeks ago and we needed to replace him, I thought we had already replaced him with Eric Witham, and why don't we have a president now? No, Eric was not a, a council appointment. John was a council appointment, so the council needs to right. to fill that position. And as far as a count, uh, RDC president, uh, they will have to uh, reconvene, and I think they're going to have a meeting Friday. And at five thirty. And by, at at that meeting, I think they'll probably install officers. I don't know. So Eric was not moved up during that time period. By statute, when I resigned, he automatically moved to president. Okay. Yeah. Until, okay. There, until there's a vote, he, he automatically oh, okay. became. Okay. He doesn't know that. So why is it he's there now? I mean, we've had two presidents in two weeks. He, he resigned last Friday. He resigned last Friday? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, he resigned last Friday, so the council will need to replace John, John's position, and then I will have to find a replacement for an open position on the RDC. That's a mayor's appointment. So there's only two voting members of the RDC right now? Three. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay, I was just curious. Thank okay. You. All right, motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. Uh, actually, we have a I have one other question. I'm sure. sorry. On the basketball bowl ordinance, I never did hear exactly what the fine is going to be from the police that they are in trouble, and if and besides that, then how is the public going to be notified or let be known before they start getting fined that this is now not something? I don't think there's Carl. I don't think there's a fine. There's. Go ahead, Mills. 
I, I think the way we would address this is how we would address anything. We usually try to give you, especially with the new orders, we would give a warning. Okay. And then, like uh, Anthony Davidson said, there there is a fine schedule. If one's not assigned to it, it's, I think it says from a dollar to nine hundred ninety nine dollars. So generally, that would be that would be following the ordinance violation bureau, and so that fine is generally twenty five dollars. And we would only do that if we're not getting compliance and doing it. And after you receive a fine or two, we would have the possibility of calling Hicks Tow Company out to tow it out of there. But it would, we would generally give a warning first. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right. Where were we? Well, somebody motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Uh, motion, or the meeting is adjourned, 8.06 p.m.